Okay, there's a couple more actions to look at here, and they're not actions per se. You don't find them in the actions uh, list, but they are functions uh, that are built into uh, Setup Factory 7.0 that are very handy. And that would be the do file and require functions. The main difference here being that the require function will only run your script once, whereas the do file will run your script every time you call it. So this is an external script call, and basically we'll just go ahead and set up um, a text file. So I'm in a basic text editor here and I'm creating a Lua file now. So I'm actually uh, going dialog message message hello world as we've done before. Now you can actually um, import and export Lua files in a lot of different ways. So this is not the only way, but I'm just choosing a text editor here for the purposes of this demo. So that's what we've got. We've got our action. Let's go ahead and save this as a Lua file. So we'll say save as script.lua. So instead of text, we're using the Lua um, suffix. We'll go ahead and close down our text editor, go into setup factory here, and we'll set up a do file action. So do file just requires a path to that particular script. In this case I put it on my desktop so let's go ahead and specify desktop folder and then uh, we're going to have to concatenate on the rest of the path which is going to be a double slash so we have to escape that backslash of course inside quotations uh, anytime you've got a backslash you have to double uh, that up or escape it so that the uh, uh, setup factory coding engine knows what's going on the scripting engine and then we're going to go ahead and put in the name of our script which was script.lua so this thing is going to look on our desktop folder for something called script.lua and it's going to use the do file function to run that so in other words you can see that we've got no dialog message within our application here but when we publish it and run it of course it's going to run that code from our external file at runtime and there we go we get that dialog message action and let's just take a look at the require uh, version of this you would just change where it says do file to require and again the main difference here being that it's only going to require that script once okay so it's going to call it once whereas with do file it will call that script every single time uh, you call that so let's go ahead and run this again as you can see it's essentially the same output uh, for the purposes of this demonstration. So that's require and do file, a couple of very powerful uh, functions that allow you to run external scripts at runtime. And there's a wide variety of applications for this. Of course, you could be using a dynamic system to create your script, or you could be downloading your script at runtime so that, for example, uh, let's say you have uh, several installers deployed, 100 installers, and you have your script centralized to your website, and at the time of install, it's going ahead and retrieving the latest script. So that can be very handy, um, and there's a wide variety of other applications too. But suffice to say that the, the meat and potatoes of this one is that it's going and it's finding an external uh, Lua file and it's parsing that code at runtime. And you're doing that via the do file, which will do it um, repeatedly, or the require function, which will do it once.